Good evening, tubers, and welcome once again to the Stink Bug Works, the super secret research and development division of Dr. Chet Laboratories. This is Friday. It's been a busy day. I worked on a couple of land projects, got some proposals out. I... Uh, strung up and set up a couple of guitars and finally I got to work on the 10 inch challenge and uh, one of my subscribers had asked about props and he mentioned that there was a uh, cool little uh, 20 millimeter or so prop maybe 1.2 pitch on the little mini blackjack nine i have that same prop right here in my collection of little obscure props and so uh that is a possibility i'll be looking into i'm going to show you some more props i have and in fact let's just do that now while i'm talking about it uh i've got a bunch of these grotner ones they're all labeled as K props. I thought I had a bunch of S series props. I don't know where those are. These are those uh, 26 millimeter props that you can get from Steve over at uh, Offshore Electrics. These are uh, Groppner props. They're nice props. Uh, fit a two millimeter shaft, uh, two millimeter threaded shaft. And so this is one of those Robesh scale boat ones. But these little guys also fit two millimeter uh, threaded shafts. And so the blade, it looks thin. It's, you know, stiff for its size. It's got a big boss, no doubt, to accomplish uh, or uh, accommodate a fairly large shaft. But... Uh, Am I getting that in the picture or not? Am I staring off into space instead of looking at what I am? Anyway, you guys all get the idea. You're clever. And uh, so that's some of those little ones I have. Um, of course, I keep my, my good props in a box. Everybody should have a box. I bought, I bought a bunch of cigar boxes on eBay, and I use them for all kinds of things. Uh, see, there's one that stores my uh, solder pot. You know, they're, they're, they're handy. But anyway, these make good prop boxes. So I've got some uh, 430s that I've worked on, some 430s, some 531s, uh, some 534s. Are these 534s? or 535s, these are pretty big, and a vast assortment of plastic props. But my decent metal props, my decent metal props, um, I used this a long time ago in a little tiny shovel nose. It was uh, an H&M shovel nose, and I put way too much power in it with a high KV motor, and... This was a 427 that I reduced way down and it still had a lot of lift. So I back cut it quite a bit. And actually that little thing ran pretty good with it. In fact, it had the motor that is now in my catamaran that I'm having such problems with handling on. Uh, I think I have that solved too. And uh, next time out to the pond, I was gonna go Monday but it's looking like looking like rain. Here's something uh, you don't see very often. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. It's a 427, but it's not from Octura. It's a stainless steel one from Prop Shop. So I've got a Prop Shop stainless steel 427 bone stock that... Uh, and then this, these uh, 26 millimeter aluminum props, there's an untouched one right there, were available on eBay. So I bought several of them and they work pretty well. That's what's on my cat right now that used to spin that in a smaller boat. Um, 
I found they work pretty good if you cut the tongues off. The tongues are kind of awkward on these. So those are all my small props that would be suitable for that boat. But now, let's get to that boat. Something's not right. Oh, it might be that that doesn't fit. No, it has to fit. I'll deal with it later. Anyway, <laughs> the 12-inch challenge. Here it is. Yes, I like to keep these things where they're uh, protected from me dropping the, uh, the heat gun on them. So here, look, we'll pull out the tub, the sponsons, and the tubes. And let's see what we can throw together. I just happen to have my little setup thingies that make setting it up a snap. Oh yeah, a turn fin, huh? You like my turn fin? Hmm. And we'll just throw this thing together and see what it all looks like. And then, and then, you probably want to know, what does it weigh? Well, I'll tell you what. When we have it all together, I will answer that question because if you look, you will see that it has a battery and it has a hard to remove hatch. I think it's easy to get this hatch out and then get in here and pop that. But it's got, I think I may put the receiver here for room uh, and balance. Um, 10 amp speed control, according to my calculations, according to my calculations, this cut down X427 that's been reshaped to be more like a P series prop. So it'll have a bit more lift than an X series prop, but it won't be like, you know, the 17 series. So it'll be like a P series prop. It's got some rake to it and I can live with a little bit of lift. Hey, it is a rigger. Riggers don't mind lifting props if you'd set them up for them. So there you go. Now the answer to the question, folks, and realize that I'm going to cut some off the boom tubes, but I'm also going to add a rudder. So it'll be... A bit heavier because I've got the pieces of wood with the pivot and the bolt. So, yeah, it'll add maybe a gram or two to the all-up weight. But here, boys and girls, is the answer to the question at hand. And I'm going to try to do this to where I can set the, the fin in the hole. And you can see that it's... That's not correct. There we are. It's 189.43 grams. This thing will be 190, maybe 192 grams. It'll be under 200 grams when it's ready to rock and roll. There you go, folks. It's getting close. I need to make a rudder, do a little more setup business, and it's going to be time to rock and roll. So 
that's what I did on my Friday. And now I think I'm going to call it a day and spend a while staring at the inside of my eyelids. Jet out. After I finished that video, I thought some of you might want to see some technical details. So here, let me help you out. Um, first thing is, I've got this little tiny, let's see, how can I zoom this in? I've got this little tiny uh, Emacs servo. It's a uh, 3.7 gram servo. And you can see it's driving a Sullivan cable that pops through the uh, motor mount and motor mount support right there. And exits. I added one more piece behind the motor mount and I actually uh, glued uh, the monocoat. It, it's covered in monocoat. Yes, clear monocoat. That's my sense of humor. Anyway, so uh, I've filled that uh, exit hole there with uh, polyurethane glue and then I have a tube here in my rudder bracket that holds the end of this and what'll happen is um, I'm going to tin the end of the uh, Sullivan cable. And I have these little tiny micro, uh, um, oh, clevis pins that's going to go on. And, of course, you'll have a, uh, a carbon fiber rudder. And there's a couple like little wood bits that uh, come off of here to hold the rudder. And my plan is to have the rudder hinge or on the, the clevis arm uh, um, perpendicular here. So I'll get equal left and right and everything will be cool. So that's that little detail. Um, Receiver is going to go back there. 10 amp speed control. It says I cut the prop down to 23 and a half millimeters. It says I should draw 10.5 amps. This is a 10 amp speed control, but I did put this really big heat sink on it. So that that's going to be, you know, comparable to water cooling on a bigger speed control. I mean, that's huge compared to that so that will be a good heat source this battery yes you saw it folks it is standby it is a 3s battery i am going to run this on 3s here let me out zoom uh, out and go zoom in. My battery is 54.8 uh, 54 grams. I am legal. Um, turn fan. Hey, let's zoom back in on Mr. Turn fan. So I got him on with a couple of couple of bolts, and over here. One of the holes is ovaled so I can adjust the tilt. And then, of course, the holes are evenly spaced so I can move it fore and aft. I've got it as far back as I can get it uh, just because I think it'll help hook better in the turns. Um, I, I did, where is it? Uh, I did melt a hole through the monocoat. <laughs> got a little overzealous with the heat gun so i put a patch on it mm, okay well you know can't be perfect so it'll just be jetted uh so there's not a whole lot more to do to it i need to seal up the stuffing tube uh in its uh, little ski there and i need to build a rudder and 
I need to do a, a, some wiring. Um, I may just solder the motor control directly to the motor and eliminate the complexity of, of plug complexity and weight of plugs and such, you know, and just be done with it because it's small enough and easily accessible enough. We'll see what happens. Um, so there you go. A few final details. And now I can stare at the inside of my eyelids. Jet out.